All right, Dustin, so camp season. How many camps has this been for Dustin Schlater this summer 2019? Uh, so far about half a dozen. Half a dozen. And is this the first one where you've actually flown out to it? Uh, th this summer. This summer. Be the first I know you fly out to camps all over, but yeah. um, do you try and stick local in Minnesota? I mean, it's, it's easier to, to stay in the state or within a couple hours for uh, you know a day trip. And a little... You know, a little harder to get out to the state of Washington, but and it's beautiful out here. We're staying in Robert's house. How sweet is that guy's house, by the way? Oh, it's amazing. Right? The scenery's incredible. Uh, he's got three dogs that I love. One peed in the, the mattress I was supposed to sleep on. <laughs> That's no big deal. We got a new mattress. Are you serious? Yeah. It really happened. Yeah. That's totally awesome. Yeah. All right, so well, that just made this interview yeah. a lot better, right? Yeah. Yeah. But they made it happen, and they got great hospitality, and the Robertsons Absolutely. are great awesome to deal with. Family. When you come out and you get to work with someone like with, with Calvin Roberts, Northwest Elite Camps, what's it like when you can come out and help somebody who, I think in Minnesota, he was there earlier, you guys were passing, as you were coming in, maybe he was going out, right? He was there for my first year. So your first year, the year you won NCAAs, Calvin's on staff. Yep. So, I mean, that's a pretty special year for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, you did an unprecedented thing, right? And uh, it's got to be a good memory, at least you have yeah. Calvin Roberts, right? And, uh, yeah, we had a fun year together. Um, I won in, I think we got uh, second. The NCAs, and we were a Big Ten champ, so it was a very good year overall, and we had a lot of fun. And, I mean, you know, K Rob, he's, he's a good time. He's got a little bit of energy. He does. And you know what? Tomorrow, I think he's going to try and get into the technique, mm -hmm. and he's a little banged up right now. Yeah, I he's think limping he's, around. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's limping around, but I bet you he's going to try and strap up tomorrow and show oh, us yeah. get some technique, yeah. which is pretty amazing, right? Yeah. But um, when you see yourself and you see, you know, like going, you and him are kind of different as far as the energy level, you're, you're really calculated. When you come to camps, what do you want kids to get out of camp with Dustin Schlater? And what do you want them to take away from you teaching them technique, you running a practice, a workout, whatever it is? What do you want them to take from that that experience with you? Oh, uh, I mean, really, I want them to enjoy it. You know, I want them to come away and be like, man, that was really cool. I had fun. Uh, obviously, picking up new things, learning new ideas, technically, um, being pumped up, excited, excited to wrestle. You know, like you, you're a man of few words, but you're a really good teacher. Right, because going from Ashnall to you, you know, he's right out of college. There's a big difference, right? And it's just like you're concise, you're clear, and there's a big difference. How much of these helped you become a better coach and a better teacher of wrestling technique and, and just imparting wisdom to people in general? How have camps helped you? Um, yeah, doing camps over the years, especially working with different different skill levels, different ages. Uh, some days I'll work with you know, our senior club guys that are – some of the best in the world, and then I'll go do a, a practice with four-year-olds who are still learning to penetrate sprawl. Uh, and just knowing the differences and where different guys are at, you know, you gotta cater and, and you know, be able to communicate and articulate the important parts of, of wrestling and different moves and this and that. Um, but just the experience of it, um, I guess, back to the original question, which was? You know, what do you, you know, like, what have camps taught you to be a better coach? Yeah, I mean, just putting the time in it and trying to help help kids from di different backgrounds, different levels learn, you know, things that'll help them in wrestling, and it really makes you a better wrestler. Um, just having to really think about the technique and how you're going to explain it, and what you're going to say, and you know, when you have to, you know, focus on this area or that area, you you understand the emphasis, you know, the, the important points. Okay, you came up through a, like a crazy system. You came up through the Jordan system. You and I were talking about that today. That system is so repetitive. Mm -hmm. It's collar tie based. You do a little collar tie stuff today. But when you come up through a system like that, you pick and choose and you come up through the J-Rob system. So you came up through two of the like most successful, largest camp systems in the United States of America. What do you think you've picked and chose from those two different systems that you know you kind of came up through? You worked one and came up through Jordan, but what have you taken from those two systems and those two coaching uh, approaches that you've, that you've been under? Uh, yeah, I mean, it I've been fortunate to be around some of the best uh, coaches and clinicians, best camps, um, great training partners. So I was exposed to a lot, which is a, a big thing. You know, I think you know getting to the right camp system is important, or the right you know training system. But you got to put yourself out there and get to different places, different environments, uh, different challenges. Um, well, with Jordan, I think just hammering the basics, and, and I think one of the big things taught me is just how important positioning is, no matter where you're at the mat. And I kind of kept that with me, but. You know, it's a lot of drilling and, and not, not a lot of flashy, fancy stuff. You know, but I think learning the basics and you put your mark on it. You can do the flash, the fanciness. You know, as you as you get older, but you gotta have those basics down, or it's not gonna work. And uh, I think J. Rob is similar to that. 
and he was, uh, I liked his, his discipline and the, and the hard work that he instilled and some of the values. So. Okay, so definitely grittiness is the, the trademark of, of j oh, yeah. we, we all know that. Yeah. Cody Yon told me a crazy story. I was telling you about it when I was out in their club in Denver. He would drop him off at the St. Paul oh, yeah. campus with a 45-pound weight and just get back. How much of it is just like intestinal fortitude, grit, toughness, under the Minnesota system, would you say? Oh, it was, you know, it was a big part of it, I think, just the mental toughness aspect of it. Um, yeah, I mean, they'd drop us off wherever. We'd have to figure it out and run back. And sometimes with a 45-pound plate, sometimes with a partner, you have to, you're supposed to carry him back. Um, just all kind of crazy stuff. Bear crawling a mile. You, know, you, you bear crawl a mile? Yeah. Where at in the stadium? Uh, I tried to do it on a track, and it was the summertime, so it didn't work. My hands it was really hot. So I went in the field house and went back and forth. I don't know, it's 20 sometimes, whatever the numbers they look up. Are you serious? Yeah. That's, but that's like what, you know, Jan was talking about, like, that's how he kind of, like, broke through some of his barriers yeah. of, of just getting tougher. Yeah. Being tougher and just being gritty. And, and you know, he was he was really into that, talking about And that's kind of what got him over the hump, right, to be an All-American. But, um, okay, new job. Mm -hmm. Talk new job. Um, last time you and I talked, you were, I think you were volunteer. You might have been uh, volunteer. When, when did we talk last? Uh, when you were at that combine. 2016? 2017? Uh, I might have been assistant then. So your assistant coach then, last time we talked, how much has your your life changed from assistant coach, University of Minnesota, right, Gophers, to RTC? Mm -hmm. It's a storm, right? Minnesota storm. Yep. You're, you're the head RTC coach at, for, the, for Minnesota, right? You're their support network for mm -hmm. freestyle and post-grad athletes, mm -hmm. right? How much has your life changed with RTC freestyle coaching compared to the college coaching? Uh, a little bit, but not, not a ton. I mean, I'm still very much involved with, with the program. It's, you know, very one and the same. And, and um, you know, our club is there to, to put guys on World Olympic teams, win medals, but it's also there uh, to help the college guys get better, the RTC athletes that are in the area. Um, so I think we all, regardless of the same goal, of, you know, improving the wrestling that's in our room and getting results. Um, for both college and senior level guys. Um, but my focus, like you said, is different. I, I focus more on freestyle, and, and my number one priority is the senior level guys. Uh, recruit more senior level guys in their training and uh, the fundraising and, and less, you know, recruiting and, and the college specific stuff. But to Talking about RTCs, you know, it's like kind of an arms race here. Mm -hmm. Right now, obviously, we know we've got Nittany Land Wrestling Club, mm -hmm. we've got Ohio RTC, you know, Michigan Cliff Keen, they, they've obviously got a good deal going on. And you know, there's just Sunkiss. There's you know, we could sit here and t name a bunch of them, and, and they're all doing a really good job. Virginia Tech's got a pretty good one, obviously New Jersey. So you know, and you guys, with just to name a, you know a few Hawkeye wrestling clubs. So um, it's an arms race, fun fundraising. That's a big part of your job. Your big part of your job is getting donors to make sure you can get more senior level athletes. How stressful is that? Uh, it can be a little stressful. I mean, we got a you know pretty big budget, and um, we got to continue with fundraise and. Fortunately, we have good people surrounding the program, and, and I think at the University of Minnesota, we're in a very good place where we've had a lot of successful wrestlers who on to, to be successful in business, and, and they, they give back, and um, you know, it's important to keep those, those connections. And uh, We have nine freestyle athletes full-time, so getting those guys stipends and um, traveling with those guys all over the world, and, and there's a price tag on that. Um, but I think it's important, you know, when the kids getting recruited, they want to know that if they want to wrestle at the Olympics, that they have those aspirations and they're at that level. That someday that their club or their school has a club that can support them and help them get there, and they won't have to leave and go somewhere else. And, and I think uh, having a full-time coach and nine full-time athletes, uh, you know, is, is pretty pretty important. You guys are committed, obviously, and you and I were talking about you traveling to Siberia. You 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 embrace the international travel. It's a big part of it, like just you know, just the coming up. Yeah. If you want to win a world title, mm -hmm. you got to go to Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You want to do it. You want to get it done. You got to go to a place where mm -hmm. some people are riding around on horses. There's mm -hmm. stuff happening that maybe you're not used to. Getting out of your comfort zone, traveling internationally. How big of a part is that for your, for your nine senior level athletes that you coach? Oh, it's. I mean, that's a big thing, and it's a it's a big thing for any any wrestler that wants to wrestle at that level. Uh, you got to get yourself out there and, and be uncomfortable, you know. I, I didn't have a lot of international experience before I was even on the world team, the senior world team. Um, there was no cadets or juniors, and uh, 
I think that's a huge advantage we have, and, our, and hopefully our young guys are taking advantage of it. And you know, you get to feel those guys over there, just a different style of wrestling, and not just you know, we're talking Russians or Iranians. And you know, everyone's got their their niche, and they, they feel a little different. And it's good to to feel that and realize that you know you can beat those guys. And, and not only that, but putting yourselves in these environments where it's you feel a little. Uh, you know, uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. I was looking for a different word. Yeah, uncomfortable. Um, you're out of your element, and uh, it's not just the wrestling that's challenging. It's the food there is not good, and maybe it's not sitting right, or you know the the showers are freezing cold. You've been traveling for 25 hours. Like these things happen at the senior level. So the more you can put yourself in those those kind of situations, the more resilient you'll be, and the easier it'll be when it happens. All right. Last thing. Where are you headed next? What training camps you guys got? What's the summer look like for? For Minnesota Storm, Dustin Schlater, where do you go from here, and, and what's it look like in 2019 summer? Um, you know, got some camps, a few different places. We'll take uh, this week, the Fourth of July week off, and then um, pretty much RTC practices run run year round, and so we'll be back next week and uh, with that grinding and uh, camps in Colorado. What, oh yeah, you got a U.S. national team camp, right? What are the RTC dates and times? for uh, Storm, what, and I know it's a 250 mile radius, mm -hmm. right? What are the, the dates and times for you guys? I'll pretty much go Monday, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. You do, every, you go Monday, Friday, 10 a.m. Monday through Friday, five days a week, 10 a.m. You run all those practices. Not, not so I, I don't run every, every single one, but Okay, but you're there. Them, yeah. Wow, I get you five days a week if I live within 250 miles and I'm top four in the state. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. That's not bad. No, it's a good gig. I mean, yeah, it's, it's free and you're in there and you're wrestling you know, right next to or against all Americans, you know, national team members, you know, some of the best guys, you know, in the world and very high level, so. Yeah, that's that's good. So five days a week. Yeah, I mean, good. if I was in high school, I'd, I'd be all over that. It would be a different right? thing if you think about this. It would be very different if it were 2005 mm -hmm. and these RTCs were like what they are now. Mm -hmm. You'd be in there banging with senior level athletes. You might even be been even better than you were as a true freshman. Yeah. Crazy thing, isn't it? All right, you got anything else for me? Nope. Thank you for the time. Good luck. Safe travels home. Keep grinding. Thanks.